So welcome everyone to this extraordinary gathering. What a privilege it is for all of us to be here. No doubt, if I may have the next slide, please. Garen, where are you? If I could give you the cue, and maybe if I raise my hand, then you can perhaps go on to the next slide. No doubt every thoughtful person alive today who reflects on the state of our planet acknowledges that the crucial need facing humanity is to find a unifying vision of the nature of society, of future society, and of our human nature and our place within this world at this time. Such a vision unfolds in the writings of Baha'u'llah. Next, please. Baha'u'llah states that the purpose for which mortal men have from utter nothingness stepped into the realm of being is that they may work for the betterment of the world and live together in concord and harmony. Next, please. As for the vision of society, he states that we have all been created to carry forward an ever-advancing civilization through an evolutionary process that has already spanned over thousands of years in the past and is destined to continue into eons of time. Please don't turn the light off because it's so lovely. This is not a performance, it's a, it's a, please turn the light on on the audience. Thank you very much, so we can see each other. Indeed, we as a species have traversed evolutionary stages analogous to those which every one of us as an individual goes through, including infancy, childhood, not, not next, not go back, please. <laughs> infancy, childhood, adolescence, until we actually reach the final and most wonderful stage of our maturity or adulthood. Each stage, of course, has its special characteristics and challenges and beauty, with increasing expression of our talents and capacities until they attain their highest level of expression in the stage of maturity. Next, please. Just as we have evolved, and just click through them until the end of the uh, uh, end of the uh, the section on that right-hand side. Just as we have evolved intellectually and physically, we have also evolved spiritually and socially by attaining ever greater levels of unity. So we have passed the earlier stages of establishing the family unit, the tribe, the city state, the nation state, and are approaching the next and inevitable and final stage of our social organization as a world commonwealth of united peoples and nations. It is a very exciting vision, which few people in this world realize that this is the next natural, inevitable stage in our evolution. Next. Now, naturally, the next question is, what forces have propelled our evolution and enabled us to build civilizations and make any progress? Well, throughout history, our Creator has sent to humanity a series of divine educators or teachers whose teachings have provided the basis for the advancement of civilization. Baha'u'llah, the latest of these messengers, 
explains that all these teachers all over the world are from the same source and are in essence successive chapters of one faith whose purpose is to guide and enlighten us on our way and our journey in every stage of our development. No people has ever been deprived of this grace. Next, please. And what these great teachers have taught us have invariably formed the foundation of our human values, what we call human values or moral values, which in turn have guided us as individuals in how to lead our lives and also in creating healthy, harmonious relationships with each other and with nature and with cosmos. So long as we remember these values, then we prosper and thrive. But if once we forget them, then we flounder and fail. Next. Baha'u'llah has revealed teachings desperately needed for the next stage of our collective evolution as we struggle to pass through the current most turbulent, most difficult stage of our rebellious adolescence and at the threshold of reaching maturity. These teachings, next please, make achieving our collective world unity possible. The most important of these teachings is the principle of the oneness of humankind. And this is at once the goal and the operating principle of Baha'u'llah's vision of a united world. If you go back to that picture, Baha'u'llah compared the world of humanity to the human body, the most beautiful metaphor. Within this organism, millions of cells, diverse in form and function, play their part in maintaining a healthy system. Similarly, harmonious relationships among individuals, communities, and institutions serve to sustain society and allow for the advancement of civilization. Next, please. These are some passages from the Baha'i writings. Let your vision be world embracing rather than confined to your own selves. The earth is but one country and mankind its citizens. Our consciousness of our oneness and of the home, uh, of our common homeland, the earth, is what is driving the next stage of our collective advancement. Next. Translating this vision of a united world into action and building a society that consciously pursues this collective purpose is the work of not only this generation, but of many generations to come. And we welcome all who labor alongside us in this undertaking. This venture is open to every single human being because the prosperity of every individual, every family, every people should be sought in the well-being of the entire human race. Every human being is as worthy to live and to express their potential as every other individual in this world. Next, please. So what does this all mean? Well, it doesn't mean that we have all the answers right now. It does mean learning how to raise up vibrant, outward-looking communities. It means those communities learning how to bring about spiritual and material progress. It means learning how to contribute to the discourses that influence the direction of that progress. And youth are at the vanguard, next please, of this 
process of community building and translating the vision of Baha'u'llah into reality and action. And they are the most active protagonists of change in progress. The great news is that this society building power is alive and spreading very fast and has taken root throughout the whole planet, open to all members of the human race. And if we are to reduce the suffering of humanity, we need to accelerate this process as we see all the changes that are taking place in this most difficult time in our history. Because we need to create a sustainable alternative to all who long to see peace, unity, justice established on our beautiful homeland, planet Earth. And at this point, I am delighted to be able to invite a few representatives of some of the youth who are working to translate this vision into reality in our own very city of London, Little London, that is hosting this wonderful conference. Please.